Hi everybody, welcome back to Prison Architect. Welcome back to SummerSlam. We return on day 68 in SummerSlam's illustrious history. It's been going for 68 whole days. How many people have died? Countless. How many people have escaped? Um, maybe like three. I think there's been like three or four total. And then there was one like attempt recently where um, a warning shot was fired apparently. Apparently it was a warning shot, not a tranquilizer gun. Um, and the warning shot was enough to suppress the guy um, and prevent him from running outside um, through that narrow escape before the wall was done. You remember a little while back? Anyway, we are back. Uh, once again, apologies for like the slight echo in the background. Like my, my studio space that I use to record in uh, has been changed recently. Uh, and I'm still waiting for some stuff to come down before I can get rid of like the sort of annoying echo and some other things. Uh, so it might still be like a couple of episodes of it, but hopefully it's not too annoying. It annoys me a little bit because I have to listen back to it, but I'm just about coping with it. I'm like just about getting by with it. So it, it's not too, too bad. What the fuck is going on here? What the hell is Scott Nobati doing? He's just opening everybody. Look at these guys are <laughs> just like laying in beds of mail. Why is all this mail here? Is this all for you guys? Like, what are you guys doing with all of this mail? It's crazy. It's like it's like indecent proposal, but instead of like a lot of money on the bed, it's just torn open envelopes and postcards and a any other mail that you'd expect to get, I guess, in prison. Maybe, of course, you might get a Polaroid picture of you and your best friend Leroy about that time that you were both staring at a lettuce gem and pointing a fork at it and saying, Oh man, not again. And, um, you know, like later on down the line, maybe 20 years later when you're not in prison anymore, you can look back on that fun time and laugh together and say, Oh, remember? That was crazy and also the worst time of my life. And then just stare at each other like with this really disgusted look on your faces. Um, as if to say, like, why did you even bring it up? Now I'm reliving it. Anyway, um, it is uh, 10, well, almost 11 o'clock at night. Everybody's sleeping. We haven't had a shakedown in some time. Uh, we have 16 guards, 17 guards just hanging around doing nothing. So why not, right? We begin, um, well, we go into day 69. Um, quite, quite, the, quite the milestone, actually, day 69. Uh, we go into day 69 uh, with a shakedown. That's right. This shakedown will persist throughout the early hours of day 69. Uh, and then who knows what day 69 will have in store for us. Minimum security, normal security, and maximum security intake is happening in eight hours time. We're still waiting for a death row prisoner. And we're still trying to get some money together so that we can buy this plot of land and, um, you know, do some supermax stuff. Because the supermax area we have right now is more like a battle arena with uh not soresby doing some chi i guess he's just like uh working on his chi inside his cell he's hovering above the ground slightly as you do and uh he's just thinking about life and bugs probably maybe like some trees Na you know nature things because that's it it's it's therapeutic right it relaxes you and stuff um so that's the kind of stuff that they think about when they do that one. Shit. Again! We just... There was just a tunnel coming out of one of these cells. Who is this? Gareth Robinson. You've had it, buddy. That's it. You have had it. You're going to Supermax. And you know what? You're also going to have a permanent lockdown as well as the other guys who are in there. That's right. We don't suffer people trying to escape from SummerSlam. That's right. Spread the word, everybody. If you're caught escaping, you're going into the battle zone with all of these other guys. John Jay, Soresby... We got Andrew Evans here, who is um, punished until uh, further notice. Scott Bird. Is that it? Did we only send one guy to Supermax last time? It was the, it's the new guy, the fresh meat. And he seems to be doing fine for now. Andrew Evans. Uh, he had an escape attempt and weapons found on him. He's got to still serve 35 hours of solitary. Um, but he's also got a permanent lockdown in our Supermax Battle Arena, and he's soon going to be joined by Gareth Robinson, who's also trying to get out of here. Um, really, really bad move, Gareth. You, you're not going to know. You're going to wish you weren't born, that's right. You're going to take one look at Soresby. Soresby is like the Jabba the Hutt of the prison. You're going to walk into the room, and he's going to be sitting there, 
groaning and moaning with his deep ass voice. Um, and then he's going to sort of pull a lever and a little um, area under the floor of his battle zone will open up. And under there, there's like this huge brown hideous monster and you're not a Jedi. So you have no hope of ever fighting against it or making any sort of headway getting out of there. And all the while, Soresby is upstairs uh, in his battle arena yard dormitory thing, laughing his head off. But like a deep, sinister Jabba the Hutt laugh, not like a, not like the clown from It or anything, you know. Like that's more like a high-pitched uh, maniac laugh. Well, we're talking about like a, you know, like a kingpin sort of laugh, um, like a really deep calculated laugh like a sinister one so there we go uh this guy had some poison on him apparently like it's funny what you can find when these guys are asleep because they don't have time to react right they don't have time to hide things like in the toilet or whatever so you just find all manner of shit like shoved up their asses and stuff like a power drill for example cell phones that's a pretty common one you know you find those things lodged in people's asses all the time um, I was reading something, apparently, like, a couple of times a year, like, women will, uh, be admitted into, like, the accident emergency room, um, with, like, cell phones just, like, stuck in their vajayjays. I guess that's, like, a thing that people like to do nowadays. They just like to, like, cram them up there for some reason. Uh, of course, they're not meant to go up there, and then, of course, they get stuck there. Um, and the only thing you can do is go to the hospital and say, listen, I've got a phone in my puss. I can't get it out. Can you help me? I mean, it's not just phones, too. It's other stuff as well. This seems to happen uh, far more frequently than you'd think it did. But um, there you go. A little um, bit of wisdom for you on day 69. Anyway, uh, the shakedown's almost done. It doesn't look like we found any wooden tools. We'll just take a quick look and see if we've actually found any wooden tools in the past 24 hours. It looks like people really like phones. Um, there's a couple of forks and spoons missing. Poison as well, which all seems to be coming from this room here. Poison, poison, there's like some alcohol that's been traded in here as well. So this cleaning cupboard seems to be a source for lots of hijinks um, in and around here. I don't know if we can... Oh shit, here we go. Here we go. We got a wooden pickaxe. All right. We're going to have to search this cell again quite thoroughly once the shakedown is done. It's almost done. Uh, we may dismantle the toilet as well. But if there's a pickaxe in here, it's very likely that there's a tunnel under here. Let's do another search. Hey. No. No. We were just about to search that one corner. What are you doing? Jeez. All right. Maybe wait 35, 45 minutes before you search this cell because corner has just... Um, dropped a hot one in there and I don't think anybody really wants to get in there after it probably stinks they're probably all just like what the fuck is going on you know what corner if we do find a tunnel in here you're going down for it I know this is even your cell strictly whoever cell it was I think it's this guy Tim Stubbs found a weapon on him or is it this guy it must be Tim Stubbs he's 44 years old and we found a wooden pickaxe or was it this guy no it was Scott Merman or Merwood sorry He's 40 years old, and we found tools on him. Um, but I guess he hadn't uh, started digging his tunnel yet. All right, fine. We, we're watching you guys. We're watching all of you. All right, well, we found one tunnel, uh, so the shakedown was a resounding success. We got our wall. We got everything sorted out up here. It's pretty good. Um, and intake is happening in two hours' time. Is there anything else that we would like to build in the meantime? I guess we probably want some chapels. Um, I, I guess we probably want a chapel for each block. Um, we're going to have to do that, right? Because um, the minute we start sharing chapels, that's when people start to go ape uh, and kill each other. And uh, that's really something that we would like to avoid, if at all possible. Uh, we could probably cram a chapel in up here-ish for MaxSec. They can have uh, a nice chapel. Um, and then I'm thinking that Normal and Minsec could probably um, share a chapel. Um, I'm not sure how they would share a chapel without Maxsec getting to it. Well, actually, Maxsec is surrounded by... I don't think they could get in here, actually, because they'd have to go through Minsec, which they're not allowed to do. Um, so if we made it in the yard, for instance, because the yard's big. I mean, the yard's big, but to be fair, there are tons of prisoners coming out. So maybe we should just stick to having 
uh, a chapel for each block. Um, I'm thinking, I'm really thinking of getting rid of this stupid ass holding cell. It's causing more problems um, than it's worth, I think. Like, what is this guy doing right now? He's just, he's in here. He's not even meant to be in there. All right, you know what? Fine. Holding cell, you've had it. We're going to turn this into a chapel. We're going to turn this into a chapel for Minsec. They can have this space. Look, we're going to dismantle this large jail door, and we're going to get rid of all of this stuff in here, too. We don't need all these toilets in here. However, the plumbing is there. It might be nice for there to be a toilet inside the chapel, just in case... You know, sometimes when you're praying, or sometimes when you have, like, one of those moments where you think you've seen God or whatever, a little bit of piss comes out, and wouldn't it be nice if there was a place for that piss to go that wasn't your prison overalls? Because it's bad enough that these guys have to wa- like, these Minsec guys work hard to wash these things, and the last thing they need- look, this guy's actually injured, starving, everything. What's going on? He's meant to be in- Permanent lockdown, for whatever reason, he's not. He's meant to be in the Supermax battle zone. He is not. He's injured, he's starving, all sorts of stuff. It looks like he's gotten into some sort of fight while he was in there. Unbelievable. All right, let us put a nice door uh, back here beyond, behind the canteen. Oh, this is going to be really good, actually. I'm looking forward to this. Put a door there. Let's get some concrete walls up. Would have been nicer to have it uh, as, like, brick walls, but there you go. Um, do we want tiled floors? Well, I think we're gonna keep them as tiled floors because I don't want to change I don't want to spend any money on like wooden floors or anything. Oh my god. Look how much money we just got for Intake we just got like six grand for intake because so many people are turning up to SummerSlam today There's like I don't know like 15 new dudes turning up. What the fuck? Who's trying to tunnel out now? Is this just one of those like false ones? Can you smell anything? No? Remember last time? People keep saying, oh, don't sniff around the flags, it does nothing. But I, I beg to differ. There's sometimes when you sniff around, like, lots of flags come up. And that's how you know for sure that there's a tunnel under there. All right, let's see this intake. Anybody need protective custody? Um, so far, no. These guys all seem to check out. We've got an unknown reputation here, Jack Soppy. Nobody knows who or what he is. Um, but I'm sure we'll find out eventually. We got a fearless guy here. We got a... This guy is volatile. Hey, what's going on with this guy? Why is he wearing, like... Some of these guys come, like, straight from the jail, I guess. Uh, like, they're still wearing, like, tuxedos and stuff. I don't think he was meant to be death row. But, like, it kind of looked a little bit like maybe he was death row. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, in 22 hours' time, we have two min-sec and two normal sec, which is, I guess, medium sec. These guys. Uh, guys turning up. Uh, some people are saying that if you want to get death row, um, you should change your intake. Change the intake to allow nothing except for death row. So we'll just close it off to like all prisoners and only accept death row. And we'll see if that works. I don't think it will, but pff, you never know. We'll do all available, close it to everyone, and only accept death row, right? And now that we've made these changes and stuff as well, this could work. All right, so, so far... Our jingle on the radio and our television commercials and stuff, nothing is nothing is is getting out there. Well, it, it is getting out there, but we still have some... What is going on? Why won't you go? <laughs> Why is this guy not going in here? There's plenty of room and look at all the beds. There's tons of beds. Could some, maybe he's waiting to be escorted back. Maybe that's the problem. Who's been bleeding out over here as well? Jesus Christ. All right. So we're going to make this into a chapel, and uh, again, we're going to wait. We're going to wait for um, our, a death row guy to turn up. So something's got to give here, right? We, we definitely have to get, like, a death row guy at some point. So we're just going to close everything off except for death row uh, and wait and save up a lot of money because, man, holy shit, the parole is coming through big time. All right, let's make this a chapel then. Uh, let's make this chapel for a minsec only. This will be good. Uh, what do we need in a chapel? We need uh, an altar. We can... I think we had one in storage. We have a couple of pews. Uh, we'll put these pews like... Can we put them dead in the middle? Not quite. No. It's like just a bit of an awkward... Okay, so we'll put them right up against the wall, okay? We have like six of these, right? We got six, and look at all these prayer mats. We have a whole bunch of spare prayer mats. Okay, 
We'll line this side of the hallway with prayer mats if, in case that's your gem instead of sitting at a pew. Some people don't like to sit at a pew, and you know what? Sometimes I'm sitting at a pew and I'm thinking, you know what I could really go for right now? A mat. Just to lay down on and, and do my thinking and praying and stuff. And you have an option in this chapel. It's going to be really good. Alright, now that this is sort of back up and running, uh, what else are we missing? Prayer mats. Okay, we've got some prayer mats inbound. As soon as this room is ready to go, we can schedule some um, spiritual leadership to come in here and sort these guys out. All right, fine. This is like one of the only programs that we don't have running. Spiritual Guidance, 81 in queue. Holy crap. Okay, this is going to be a big hit. Look, already there's some people coming in just suppressing themselves through quiet meditation and prayer. It's going to be really nice. We're not going to have any mixes of dudes. Do we have any rooms? Well, look, we can have another session from 1 until 3. Um, possibly so on and so forth. Okay, let's do two sessions to try to get through this uh, backlog. I mean, there are a lot of guys in Minsec. Look at them all turning up. Holy crap, these guys have been desperate. Really desperate to get in here and have some spiritual guidance. Perfect. Okay, look at this guy. He's got like an information pamphlet. He's going to go take a shower while he's reading it. That doesn't seem like a very good thing to do, but... I guess, from his point of view, he just thinks, fuck it, I'm in prison. I'll just do whatever I want. And you know what? Fair play to him. All right. Let's give um, some spiritual guidance as well to um, the kind fellows in. Actually, let's plan this out a little bit better so that we can do, like, the pew thing and have some mats at the back instead. So where's the pew and how big is it? The pew is, like, down here somewhere. Oh, sorry, not the pew, the altar, I meant. Okay, so if we want it to be sort of in the middle, it's going to have to cap off, like, here, right? Because it looks like it is... Oh, wait a sec, though. Are we going to be able to center the pews around that as well, though? That's what I'm wondering. So if it's, like, there, so it's three wide, that should be fine. And then the pews themselves are... Oh, God, they're... Look, see, they're, like, an awkward size so we're gonna have to do much the same we're gonna have to have like that oh well that's okay fine we'll do that okay great we'll have this one come down to here i guess it's just gonna be like this little um box like off the side and then of course there's gonna be a guard tower here and he can look right through the windows and make sure that these guys are actually in here praying and not just like horsing around or whatever that'll be a good thing too all right we'll make this out of concrete We'll set it up here, and then we can get a door. Um, well, once it's built, we'll get the door, because we don't want guys just rushing out here into this uh, outside bit and then, like, you know, uh, overwhelming the towers and, God, you know the rest. Like, it, it'd be pretty terrible. Um, in the meantime, let us get um, something set up up here, too. So we'll get it set up. I guess here, that should be okay. So, like, uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two... Wait, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. Okay, yeah. So that's fine. I can go like that. And this will be the chapel for max sec. So we're going to want to change these fences around a little bit. Actually, I think we can change like a lot of these fences out here. I think we could probably go for something like this instead. Um, and then we'll have a bit of like, extra space. So we have like this like no man's land in between the fence and the perimeter wall, which I think is pretty sweet actually. Um, like I hope a guy gets stuck in there and he can't find his way out and then he just dies or something. That'd be pretty good. I mean, I don't want anyone to actually die, but at the same time, it keeps things interesting, especially while we're just waiting for like death row guys to turn up who are also going to die. Basically, in a roundabout way, what I'm saying is I'm very interested in people dying and I would like to see more of it happen inside the prison. Um, for personal reasons. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, um, let's wait for these guys to do their thing. And is this ready yet? No, the construction workers are, of course, just taking, like, three goddamn centuries to get around to building a little box on the side. I mean, the thing is, we take some of this for granted, right? Like, watching these guys work, you think, oh, it's pretty easy, but... Actually, this kind of work is really fucking hard. Like, you need to know what you're doing. Like, look at all these bricks. Uh, that, I mean, these are bags of concrete, so I'm kind of lying. But look, there's like a building frame here and stuff, too. If somebody delivered to your house just a pallet full of concrete in bags and uh, a bunch of building frames, would you know what to do with it? Because I fucking wouldn't. And you know what? 
all that physical exercise would turn me off completely as well. Like, the minute it turned up, I would just be like, you know what? I think I'm done with this, actually. I don't even want to get started. I'm just going to phone somebody who maybe knows a bit better what they're doing, and hopefully they can just do it instead, because that would be ideal for me. Um, why do we have three people waiting for solitary? Like, th this is the incident report. So there's somebody waiting for medical attention now, too. Was there some sort of, like, bust-up down here? Maybe somebody had their face grinded in the workshop or something? Doesn't look like it, actually. Like, everything looks to be okay, I guess. Is the chapel definitely Minsec? Yeah, it is. Oh, look at this little smoking alley. It's completely cut off from everything now. <laughs> oh, shit. Nobody will ever go out there and smoke. What a sad day. Jesus. Um, oh, look, we got old Lenny here out in the yard again as well. He's just, like, on the phone or whatever. Good for him. Um, okay, fine. So, we want to get a door on here um, so that they can get in. Uh, and then once the door is set up, we're going to need some lights. We'll get some lights, and then we'll have also uh, all of the normal stuff uh, to pray. Um, and, and get your spiritual guidance on in a major way. I think this is going to be nice. It's probably going to help people overall just, like, calm down a little bit. You know, especially during times where, you know, the meal quantity and variety is pretty low. Um, you know, we're still waiting for, um, a death row guy, and, you know, morale across the prison is, of course, not what it used to be. You know, people are just, people are fed up. People are fed up because they've been waiting a long time, you know? We, they want to get the, um, chair set up in a place that is viewable by everybody. Um, and it'll be like a gladiator arena type thing where people, like, throw bananas and apples and cheer and boo and, oh, who died? Who was it? James Levers, who's a snitch. Oh my god, look at this. That's what happened to him. Look, this guy was trying to help him out, too. Paul Hale, he's 18 years old. He's got quite a nice beard for an 18-year-old man. James Lever is, of course, a 41-year-old man. He was in here for rioting. He was in here for five years for rioting. Now he's going to have to go and riot up in heaven. Or probably in hell, actually, because, you know, rioting is terrible. I mean, it's not as bad as kidnapping, don't get me wrong, but it's still pretty, pretty bad, I would say. All right, we want this to be a chapel. We want to get rid of these windows, because that's awkward. People are in here trying to privately pray and do stuff, and we don't want windows from other cells uh, in here. However, we do want some windows looking outside so that the natural sunlight can come in and people can pretend that God has blessed them with rays on that day. But that's a nice thing. I think like having your own personal God rays coming in uh, in the morning and stuff is a nice thing. So let's go for that. Um, this is a chapel, so we need, of course, an altar. Uh, we're gonna need, what, like six pews? Three, nope, four, five, six, and then some prayer mats. There we go. And then, like I was saying before, just in case, <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a Holy John at the back, and not to leave out Minsec either, let's also give them a toilet back here too. Just in case. It's a, the humane thing to do, right? I mean, in, re in the real world, everywhere you go, there is a toilet that's accessible by everybody, right? It should be no different inside SummerSlam. Everybody has the right to take a shit or a pee whenever they need to, uh, in suitable accommodation for that as well. Great. All right, we'll just wait for this stuff to turn up. It looks like all these construction workers are taking windows out and leaving the boxes inside the walls. Uh, it's an interesting thing to do. Um, it means that they had to knock down the wall first, store the box on the floor where the wall goes. Is this guy going... What is this? Man, this guy is just always at it. Is he just getting beaten up repeatedly inside here? He must be. Oh, look. There has been a fight inside of the battle arena. <laughs> oh, shit. The first victim of Sorsby's wrath has been uncovered. It's this guy, Gabriela Akanova. He's um, currently getting some medical attention. He's 57 years old. Sorsby does not like geriatrics, it turns out. I'm not saying that if you're 57 years old, you're strictly a geriatric, but that guy does look like a geriatric. He looks like a young Paul Newman. Um, and maybe now that he's 57, maybe he's caught up to Paul Newman. Paul Newman's about 57, right? Or is he a little bit older? 
I can never remember. I don't actually know much about Paul Newman, it turns out. Like, I know his name. Uh, I couldn't tell you what movies he's ever been in. Actually, one interesting thing about Paul Newman is that he makes salad dressing. So in case you were wondering, he does have his own brand of salad dressing. Uh, but I don't know what movies he's been in, and honestly, I don't even know what he looks like. That guy might not look anything like him. Watch Paul Newman be Chinese or something, and I just completely got it wrong. All right, let's get some water into this toilet. Um, is there some way that we can do... Yes, we can, okay. We don't want to disturb prisoners in their cells to hook up this toilet. That's for damn sure. Um, and there should be some plumbing... Oh, yes. Okay, great. There was some... <laughs> okay, so this chapel does have a fully functioning toilet now that we did not need to lay any new pipe for. This is great. Uh, we can go into programs and... Oh, my God. The meal quantity and variation thing is, like, almost done now. Visitation rooms, however, are not almost done. Uh, we have 63 hours remaining of that. That's crazy. All right, let's see. Um, if we go down here to spiritual guidance, we actually, we want to go... We could probably stop this one. We're going to do 11 to 1 across the board for spiritual guidance, okay? So, actually, we did need that one. But it looks like this has done it now. It's, it's scheduled where we wanted it to be. So where is it? From 11 o'clock until 1, we have spiritual guidance in Minsec. And then in the shared chapel, which actually is not a shared chapel, it shouldn't be anyway, it is a medium security chapel. Oh my god, with not a functioning toilet, but soon there will be a functioning toilet. And look, there's some spare space back here, just in case. You never know. What if somebody wants to do some research on uh, Jesus or something like that? Well, now they can, with an internet-enabled computer. Yes? The food budget experiment is over and the results are inconclusive. You're free to set your food policies back to whatever you wish. Well, it turns out that actually we were giving them only slightly better than the garbage you recommended. So let's set that back to medium. That's cool. Uh, people should be a little bit happier. And actually, they're going to be even happier now uh, that they have access to the internet and also access to their very own Bible courtesy of this chapel. That's going to be great. Uh, and this one is um, ready to go too. We can actually get the foundations down for this one and build it and then everyone will have a chapel. The Max Sec Chapel is going to have like a secret entrance way by the showers. We're not even going to put a door there. The last shower you have to just like grab the shower head and twist it to the left and then a secret passage opens in the back. I think that that's better. I think that that makes it a little bit spookier and maybe a little bit more exciting as well. And I think that that's what chapels need nowadays. You need, need some incentive for people to go. Um, because a lot of people just sort of think like that a chapel or a church or, or, you know, normally they're open to the public and a lot of people just assume that they can go and eat their lunch there. And that's true. A lot of these places open now and they say, bring your own lunch and you can eat here. It's no problem. And then when you're in there eating, they come up to you and they're like, oh, here, have a pamphlet and here's some other stuff that we do and whatever. And that's fair enough. But the thing is, for me personally, I need more than that. OK, I, I don't need somewhere to go eat my lunch. I want somewhere exciting to eat my lunch. All right. Like I want to eat my lunch on a roller coaster or like on a spaceship or something, not just you know, in, in an old church. So I think that in this case, um, the Max Set guys, because they have a secret passage that leads into this chapel, they might think to themselves, holy shit, that is exciting. Like, I really like the idea of a secret doorway opening into potentially some sort of dungeon that I can go into. And it turns out it's just a chapel with a um, spiritual guide and uh, you know it's all sort of like as part of a schedule or whatever but it's ex it's more exciting than your traditional uh, prison chapel with a spiritual guide um, so I'm hoping that you know people will sign up and go to that on mass that would be great um, six hours until the next intake, which is, of course, nothing. Uh, I'm hoping that after that six hours ticks over, we have a death row person. We've been currently spending the past, like, four episodes waiting for a death row guy to, um, to turn up. And prior to that, we had four death row dudes turn up and then instantly turn into normal prisoners, which I don't get at all. I mean, that makes no sense to me whatsoever, but at the same time, what can you do? We got 50 grand. 
do we want to save up for that other part of the prison or do we want to do legal prep? Every prison runs into problems every now and then and some of them can come fairly big consequences, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if we need to do that. Um, execution liability could be a good one though. Obvious for reduction the required strength of the conviction before death row proceedings can be properly started. This could be a good one actually. It might mean that we can execute people quicker uh, when people finally turn up. All right, huts. Get on it. 10k, no problem. We still got 43 big ones in the bank. We should be fine. Um, and we're just going to put the finishing touches on this chapel for max sec. And then everybody should have access to a spirit guide. Um, so that they can feel better about things in general. And maybe spend some more time thinking about nature and other people and stuff like that. And through that, feel good too. All right, let's get some lights in here. You definitely need to have lights at a chapel because it's already kind of scary uh, without them. And just having them, I think, will give people that reassurance that they're, in fact, not in a dungeon, even though there's, like, a secret way of getting in there. All right, well, look, there we go. Uh, day 69 has ended. We are into day 70. Um, we have intake in four hours, which is nothing. And hopefully we will have uh, some death row. We'll keep trying to get death row. We'll keep trying to do a couple of bits and pieces. Uh, but if nothing gives, like, pretty soon, uh, we'll give up. We'll try to escape SummerSlam. Uh, and then we'll move on with our lives. Wouldn't that be nice, right? Great. Well, as usual, thanks very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.